Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Let's Stay Together. I am so excited to have Stefania on the show today, who is, of course, one of my most highly requested guests um, imaginable in the history of this show. There you are. Hi, Stefania. Hello. Hi, I'm so, I feel like it's a tough, oh my God. Can you hear me? There you are. You froze for a second, but you're back. Okay, okay. I was just Hi. saying, I'm so sorry about your friend. This is oh, heartbreaking. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And as I said, I know that she would have wanted me to continue on with the show. And you are somebody who everybody was so excited by to be here and so touched by. And you, you touched so many lives. So I knew I had to do the show this week with you. Thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. So thank you so much for being here, Stefania. I, my oh my God, we have so much to talk about. But first of all, huge congratulations to you on all of the success of your work on Grey's Anatomy and of course, Station 19, the spinoff. Thank you. And the show is coming back this month. Fans are like, we're ready. We're ready. So I am too. I bet you are. I bet you are. So I want to bring it back for a minute to the beginning. When you first learned about this role, right? What was it that attracted you to wanting to be a part of this series in Shondaland to begin with? Uh, actually, this question makes me laugh because the word, I feel like at the time, I didn't have the luxury of being attracted or not to a show because I was like waiting table busting table actually the restaurant that I worked at so anything they would offer me they had to do with tv theater or film I'd be like okay I do it for free sure let's go so and then and then it happened to be a show that I was a fan of which was like a massive um plus and my best friend and I my best friend in Italy and I always talked about the show so it was a huge bonus and surprise but yeah at the time I didn't have the thing of like hmm do I want to do a Grey's Anatomy or no do I do something else instead <laughs> right right wow that's so amazing that you were a fan of what you were yeah. auditioning for was that like an outer body experience I like keep pinching myself when I go into the first table or you're the, uh, the first table where we see I still get nervous talking about it oh. I'm like, oh my god is this Shona Rhymes is that Adam Pompeo it was crazy wow that's incredible now of course yeah. you play the fan favorite character of Karina DeLuca on the show so how did you first hear about this role what was that audition like and had you ever tried out for any other roles in the Shondaland universe or was this the first no, I hadn't tried any other roles. Well, I have to say, like, this woman changed my life. So I, her name is Jessica Sherman. She's a casting director. I went to a casting director workshop just shortly after my mom passed. And I brought a monologue about oh, uh, oh, this woman losing her mother due to cancer. I'm going to cry now. And I was obviously very believable at it. And she, I, at the end of the workshop, she was like, oh, my God, you're, I feel like you're underrepresented. Um, I'm going to introduce you to some managers and agents that I work with. And she introduced me to 10 of them. And then of this 10, two reached back and met with me. And of these two, one of them was like, ah, you have no credit to your name. But uh, in LA, I think we say hip pocket. So it means like, I'm not going to officially represent you, but if something that makes me think of you comes along, I'll submit you for it and see what happens. And four months later, I got this email saying, you've been submitted for an audition for Grey's Anatomy. And that was my first audition for this manager. And I went and here I am. Wow, that's an amazing story. And I'm, I'm sure that was super <laughs> emotional for you with, yeah. with your mom. Wow. Yeah. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, what a fan favorite character you play. I think one of the most beloved characters on television ever is your <laughs> Oh <character>. my God. <laughs> I do. I truly do. I don't do. know so, about that, but thank you. I do. So what do you love? I've, I've heard so much from the fans what they love. What do you love about getting to play this character? I love her. I love Karina because at the beginning she was 
kind of like a comedic relief. So she would say things that no other character would say, but she said it in like, it's such a matter of fact that I don't know why you're reacting like this. And I thought it was hysterical. She was like, stimu like simulating nipple stimulation in front of everybody. And, <laughs> what are you talking about? So I love the sassiness and the, the matter of fact. Uh, and then, yeah, she's just very funny and honest and fearless. And she was a little tempered, but she also has a soft side. So it's a very fun character to play. Could you relate to this character at all? A hundred percent. I wish it was a little bit more like her in a lot of circumstances. But yeah, she's a great inspiration for me in my real life. Oh, that's so amazing. And, and fans just so love following your relationship on the show with Maya and, and of course played by Danielle who was on this show and you know seeing you two your journey unfold so now you're married y'all are talking about children but let's talk about Danielle for a minute what do you love about working with her in such an intimate way everything it's so easy it was so easy from the first moment we always tell the story about the table read and the chemistry at the table read without even knowing each other and uh, and the, we're so lucky that three years in, the relationship is still very solid and we still get along so well. And we both, we both love what we do. So we do it in a very committed way. We, we approach it differently. She's a very alpha. She's like, oh, follow the rules, do this, word perfect. I'm more like flowy, it's fine. Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we compensate each other also because of our differences. So it's, it's so fun. Did it take a while to get your group together or was it pretty no. instant after that table read? It was pretty, instant. pretty instant? Instant. We could have like crappy day, crappy day. We show up on set and we start the scene. They call action. We're like pff, locked into each other's eyes and we go for it. So it's pretty magical. Wow. That's so cool. I love hearing that on screen relationships and yeah. closeness translates to off screen and true friendship, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent beautiful thing and 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 the storyline i mean i received so many messages when i announced you as my guest saying that your character makes people feel so seen and so represented <laughs> and it means so much to so many people that they can see a couple on television and think oh my god that's me like that can be something that's i have one day what right. does that mean to you Everything, I, everything. I feel like it's so important for all of us to have expanders, to have people that have characteristics similar to our own and make us feel like, well, if she did it, I can do it. If that character did it, if the actor, actress did it, I can do it. And I feel like it's, it's how we grow, how we expand. And it's so important. It's incredible. Yeah, you know, I, I'm 36. I just turned 36. And when I grew up, oh, thank you. You know, growing up, I never saw signs of, of representation in television and media. There were very few, maybe three or two. I mean, there was like nothing out there to relate to. So right. I think seeing everything I'm seeing today, that's deep and meaningful and not just a coming out story, right? It's a beautiful love story. No, it's so important. And I feel like Shondaland has always done an incredible job in making so, like a massive chunk of the population represented. Yeah. And, and I feel like they did even, once again, they did it. Now it's the accented non-American character that is also like a fearless doctor and, and a bisexual person. Like somebody that can do whatever she wants for a living and love who she wants in her private life. I think that's so beautiful. Were you, were you at all worried or fearful when you took on a bisexual role or nothing? No, oh. none of that. Well, I have to say, the only people that gave me crap about it was like my aunt, bless her, she lives in Sicily, very conservative. So she was like, could you not have picked a different character? I was like, what? But I felt like that was a teachy, teaching moment for them too. And, and be like, this is a beautiful character. Come on, do not say that. I could have not asked for anything better. And I feel like it, it, it was tough. It was tough because my family was kind of like, judging me a little for it. Not my immediate family, my brother and sister and, and friends are all very open-minded and very like uh, welcoming towards. It's like, do whatever you want. 
as long as you don't hurt other people. Do whatever, whatever makes you happy, just don't hurt other people and I'm fine. But other members of my family are a little bit more conservative. So I was like, no, I'm doing it. I'm proud of it. Watch oh, me. Good for you. And like you said, if you can kind of change hearts and minds even a little bit, even one person, I think that's so powerful, right? Yeah, 100%. That's great. Good for you. Well, like I said, I know that storyline just means so much to so many and, and we're all cheering you two on. So it's fun <laughs> to watch. It's fun to watch. How would you describe your character's evolution throughout all the years of playing her? Well, as I was saying, it, it, she kind of started on as a comedic rage. She was inappropriate. It's like saying inappropriate things, which were not really inappropriate. They were just a little more out there. And then... Um, as the season progressed, her relationship with with Arizona ended, and it ended in a kind of sad way. And then the whole storyline about Karina losing her brother, which was like so heartbreaking. Yeah. So I felt like we went deeper and deeper and deeper and showed a different side of, of her personality. And as an actor, I couldn't ask for anything more. I love to go from like, funny to crying to angry it's uh it's so much fun yeah well you do it very impressively was oh, thank you <laughs> was the scene with with your brother on the show was that one of the more difficult scenes for you to shoot uh on an emotional level yes i cry very easily as you can tell i feel like i already cry almost cry twice during this life <laughs> <laughs> i'm italian too to... i get it i get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like my heart is right here you don't yeah. have to work really hard to see it and uh, so crying is a very easy thing for me and this storyline broke my heart and i have a very good relationship with giacomo they played andrew andrea de luca and so the whole thing of him leaving the show and him dying that way was so dramatic. So after 12 hours of full on crying, I was like, oh, I need to go to bed, I'm exhausted. But it was, it was incredibly rewarding as well. Yeah, powerful, powerful work. Mm -hmm. Now, there are so many scenes and moments for your character I'm sure that you love. And I know you've been asked about some of your favorites and you've talked about some. But what's maybe a scene that people haven't heard about as being one of your favorites? And then what would that scene be and why? Um, I feel like the first one I will never forget. The first time I was on the Grey's Anatomy set. I was like, oh my God. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was playing Arizona's love interest, speaking in Italian with this actor that was half, that is half Italian and played my brother. And I was like, wow, this is also surreal. And Debbie Allen was directing and she's super, like such a strong personality. So I was terrified, but it all went so smoothly. And I feel like my secret weapon was the Italian. Uh, my Italian dialogue, I was like, nobody understands me. So I can say whatever I want. And even if I mess up, I'm fine. <laughs> so that was like my safe spot and, and and Giacomo was like, don't worry about it. We don't tell anybody. We just fix it after. But I was very nervous. So that was, I will never forget that, that first one. That's, I'm sure that's a good memory. And what about one of your favorite scenes with, with Danny? One of my favorite scenes with Danielle, there's so many. I feel like this last episode that, not the last one that aired, but the one where we were home making babies. Um, <clears throat> we had very little time to prepare and we had to shoot all of the scenes the day after we got the script so we had very little time to do everything it was four scenes all about us and i feel like that really it was a testament to how our our connection and our um the fact that they were so good together because we, if we came out alive from that day and, and the, 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 the scenes came out good, it's like, wow, we're good together. Yeah, that's intense. That's intense. I mean, do you, is that the norm? Do you usually not have a lot no. of preparation? No, we usually, the, the writers are great, but I feel like with COVID and, and everything and some, a lot of time the schedules get shifted and turned around. So I feel like we have to be more flexible because of all that's going on. And so it's yeah. not the norm, but it happens. It happens 
No, I don't think people realize how much work goes into what you guys as artists do. It's, you know, you know, we see the final product and it looks seamless on television and masterful performances, but the amount of preparation and rehearsal and memorization and all of that, it's, it's yeah. a lot of work. Oh, fun. I can't yeah. wait. I love, I love when people are like, we're changing this. I'm like, yes. Then you're always a little less <laughs> inclined <laughs> to that because of the kind of person, personality she has. Um, yeah. But I have other things that makes me mad, that makes, that make me mad. And she's very good to be like, don't worry about it. We got this. So I feel like that's another reason why we're a very good team. Yeah, for sure. Now I have to ask because you're working so much. What do you two do for fun? Do you ever get to like go watch a movie, <laughs> go out for dinner? Like do you get to chill a little bit? Well, the past two years, not much for fun because of freaking COVID. But yeah. uh, in general, I feel like LA for me is very work oriented. And then I just get out of LA and I go travel and that's my fun part. But yeah, we watch, I watch a lot of movies. We, we actually started doing this thing of the outdoor uh, like a drive-in cinema that was fun as a, as a group with some of the cast members and the writers. But, <clears throat> and then both Danielle and I directed our first short film. So I am working on it a lot these days. So I'm very busy with work related things, but I love doing all of that. Well, when you love it, it doesn't feel like work, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. And I want to talk about your short film a bit later too. Yeah. But you, you have so much you should be proud of, but when you think about your work on Station 19, what are you the most proud of? What makes you smile and say, you know what, I'm doing something good here? You know what, I feel like I've said this before, but the most rewarding messages that I receive are messages from parents of mostly foreign uh, parents, if, of mm. foreign parents of young um, bisexual or gay girls that and they, they, they often say, like, thanks to your character, my daughter came out to us and found the courage to, to realize that her sexuality isn't bad, isn't wrong. It's just different. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that it gets me emotional every time because of what we were saying before. Like, when you were growing up, you didn't feel represented. So you had to fight so much harder to, find, to, to expose your, your true self, expose your sexual identity identity so i feel like that is psh, come on yeah yeah i'm sure those messages really sometimes probably surprise you too because in your mind <laughs> you're there you're doing your job that's what you're exactly. here to do but you're creating such a lasting effect on so many people you know yeah you're right we don't realize at all that's why it's for sure a surprise but it's like wow if we can also do that aside from loving what we do and telling you stories wow massive accomplishment so beautiful i love that now i don't want to get you in trouble but can you give <laughs> us any teases of what's to come when the season resumes anything at all little little something i don't even remember where we left off because in the middle of <laughs> we started shooting already so i'm like am i gonna spoil massively something well i feel like well, well, we were, we're trying, to, we've agreed. Maya's come around. She's agreed that she's on board with wanting to have a baby. We now have to hash out the details because obviously it's not gonna be as easy as just like, let's try until right. it happens. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's gonna be fun to navigate now this new phase of trying to become mothers. Yeah, that's a whole new chapter for us to watch. It's, it's going to be very, very fun. And um, it's fun seeing how you guys interact with the cast and, and their reactions to everything. I mean, this cast is amazing. Yeah. What do you love about working with this cast? The cast and the... So I love our showrunner. Krista is incredible. She's an yeah. incredible being and an incredible artist. Obviously, she's done... Come on, genius. And then I feel like we... It's, I work a lot with Danielle, so I spend a lot of time with Danielle, but I feel like most of my relationship with the cast members are the same on screen as they are off screen. So like Gray, Damon, Jack's relationship and I is very similar in real life to what we have on screen. It's like a little brother dynamic oh. and I'm always like bossing him around and be like, no, go do this. And he's like, okay, you're so intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> um, Boris, uh, Sullivan, uh, I, 
love his sense of humor. He's very dry and sarcastic and it cracks me up. And I'm always like the goofball that kind of like, yeah. But yeah, I feel like in general, we're all a little older and more mature and so appreciative of where, like what we get to do for a living. So it's fun. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It's nice to see, um, you know, on air relationships translate to off air. Did I just see you petting your very famous dog? Jeff, she's not yeah. here right now. Oh, I thought you were I petting would, the dog. I would, I would. She's like coming actually in a few, in a couple of hours. A lot of people were like, say hi to the dog. <laughs> Jeff is amazing. She's the best. Oh, that's so fun. Now, we have some fan questions, but before we get to the fan questions, yeah. I love I love that you are the epitome of somebody who has worked so hard coming from another country, from Italy, from Sicily? Yeah, good job. From Sicily, and okay. came here and, and created this career for yourself. So what was that journey like? Because I think a lot of people are super inspired by you doing that and taking such a big leap of faith. So what was that journey from Sicily to here like? Huh. <laughs> it was long. <laughs> I'm almost yeah. 40. So it, 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 it was going like, it was done step by step. But I feel like I was al always very fearless as a young adult. And I always followed my guts. So I started working in a holiday resort when I was 15 in the summers. And this girl was a dancer and she was doing it professionally. And she was like, you should come to Milan. And I was like, what? You can be a dancer as a job. This is amazing. You don't have to, you didn't have to like teach in a school. And, and I felt like that was my expander. I was like, if she can do it, I can do it too. So I moved to Milan, did a, a performing art college, started working. And then I was like, I need to learn a new language. It was Italian thing. I was like, I need to speak English when I travel. I don't speak any English. How do I do this? I met on a job, uh, a crew from London. One of the people was Sicilian, but was born and raised in uh, London. So he spoke Sicilian dialect and, and English. And he was like, you should come, London is amazing. I was like, okay. I went for a week, booked three jobs and moved to London. So, and then same thing with LA. I was like, ah, okay, I'm feeling it, I'm going. So I feel like I've been very <clears throat> good at following my guts. LA was a massive setback for me. It crushed my ego. <laughs> it was like, yeah, sure, you did. You were a dancer for a living up until this time, not here. Here you have to start from zero. The city is very expensive. It's so competitive. Everybody works in the same industry, so it's very hard not to get caught up in this rat wheel and try to do other things, like traveling, go to see your family and friends. I, 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 at some point I was like, I can't leave LA because when I leave, I'm going to get an audition and I can't miss the audition. I was like, oh my God, you can't do that. You have to live a life. And then I read The Big Magic from Elizabeth Gilbert. I love that. Love, love, love that. But blew my mind. I was like, boom, this is it. I need to be willing to do this even if on the side I have to keep waitressing. And yeah. If really committed to that. So I feel like find your natural talent, your natural inclination, work at getting better at it, and then wait for the opportunity to, to do it as a job. And if it doesn't come, you have to be okay with keep being whatever you are on the side that allows you to follow your artistic sparkle. Oh my God, you are, this is all sorts of inspiration on this Tuesday. <laughs> I love this, I love this so much. You should be so proud of everything you're doing and, and accomplishing and, and I like your story. I really like your story because a lot of people think if I don't hit a certain amount of success before 30 or 35, then it's done. But that's not true. Yeah. If you stick with it, amazing things can happen. Look at your story, it's amazing. Yeah. It was tough. It was tough. My parents are like, you're waitressing. Why don't you come here and do that? Why do you have to move to America to do that? And I was like, no, but there is a reason. I'm trying to. They were like, you're so far. You can do a job that you can do anywhere. Why is 12 hours of a flight away? So well, it, was I'm, I'm, it was tough. But yes, but thank yeah. God you followed your instincts because look at what you're doing, right? Thank you. Amazing. So let's get to some fan questions, okay? okay. So these okay. were some of the most popular fan questions I received in my DMs. Um, the ones I kept seeing over and over again are the ones I picked. So okay. number one, 
Why do you think fans fell in love with the Marina relationship? What makes it so special? I like to believe that... Okay, I believe we choose our friends because we have chemistry with them, because we have a connection with them, and that makes their relationship special and unique. And I feel like Danielle and I were so lucky that we have that. I feel like we were attracted to each other. We had this chemistry. We liked each other as people. And I feel like that translates because I think we're, we're good actors. But it's, I feel like when there is something more, when there's natural chemistry, when there's natural connection, it makes the acting job so much easier. So I hope, I mean, I think maybe that's part of the reason. Most of the writers are great and write great stories for us. <laughs> Yes, yes, I would agree. It's all of the above. Um, next question. I love this question. What is one thing Karina could learn from Stefania and what can Stefania learn from Karina? So Karina can learn from Stefania? If anything. Not much, to be very <laughs> honest. I think she's a better human being than I am. She's more figured <laughs> out than I am, for sure. Um... That was saying something you messed up. But I feel like Karina's style is a little bit more grown up than I would like. I would like her to be a little bit more youthful style clothing wise. But I guess she's a doctor, so fine. Maybe that's that's what Karina could learn from Stefania. And then Stefania from Karina. I love how unapologetic she is about what she truly believes. And I feel mm. like I implement that more in my life. That's amazing. I love that. Great answers. Thank um, you. Is there a fun behind the scenes stories behind the scenes story that you can share that the fans don't know? Some sort of silly story. Stuff because I feel like we share them all, and, and or it happens a lot. I don't know. I wish I was more prepared. I had something smarter to say about this. Uh... I know it's hard when I. These are just the random fan questions, so. Anything uh, come to mind? Behind, let's let's pause this and go ahead okay. and see if something comes up. All right, fair enough. Um, next question is: Do you and Danielle ever improvise? And if so, what's been your favorite moment you improvise? We improvise a bunch, especially now that Danielle is okay with it. Um, a, a bunch of kisses were improvised. Uh, a bunch of. A lot of our body um, stuff isn't scripted. The stage really? director doesn't say she touches her elbow or her shoulder, or she kisses her shoulder or anything like that. They just like to have an intimate moment. So a lot of that is improvised between us and we're so comfortable with each other that sometimes we're like, oh, you had, like we see after that my hand was, in her, was on her butt. <laughs> and she was like, did you do that? And I was like, did I do that? And then, but it's like, again, so organic and we're so in the moment that it, we don't even think about that. So those are, those moments are usually um, organically crafted in there in, during the scene. And then I feel like, like word wise, dialogue wise, not as much, not as much. Sometimes there's like little things here and there or like, and I love you or the the Italian stuff I always I always put it in like here and there and now they started writing them. So there's a bambina here, there's a bella there. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so cool. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's truly a testament to again how close you guys are to be able to trust one another to do things that are off the cuff, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. That's amazing. Um, a couple more fan questions. Yeah. What is, I thought this was a cool question. Your favorite perk of having a female love interest? Uh, I feel like we, with women it's a little easier. We're in general a little bit more gentle and sensitive and respectful of the work environment. I feel like I've had male partners that I had to kiss I had once this guy had to kiss me and I was so uh, not we were not 
in the same bubble vibe. We were not attracted to each other. We didn't have good chemistry. It was just very, very fake. And I got hives all down my neck. Every time I would get close to me and try to kiss me, I'd be like, <laughs> hives. <laughs> I had a physical reaction to how much I didn't, I, to how uncomfortable I was. So I think, yeah, working with a woman, uh, it's a little easier. And working with a woman that you like is a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, that's, wow, that's amazing. And as a follow up to that, the same person asked, and what was your favorite kiss or romantic moment together? Because there's been so many great, beautiful moments you've had. I think that the last one where I'm sitting, uh, the episode where we had those uh, uh, baby making mm, scenes, and then I was sitting on the table and, and Danielle was went to the fridge and grabbed chocolate and ice cream and stuff. I felt like the last moment in there where we decided who was going to carry the baby and all that was, again, very unrehearsed, very organic. And it was, it felt so good. Really. Y'all are so romantic. Are you this romantic in real life? No. <laughs> I am definitely not. I'm very pragmatic. <laughs> I don't know. She might be rubbing off on you. <laughs> uh, we're definitely rubbing off on each other. She started doing this every two seconds, and I, <laughs> and I started bossing people around. And like, this is what we do. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then this question I really loved, especially given, you know, what my friend went through. It's about mental health, and a lot of people were wondering, how do you stay mentally healthy, especially being so busy and with your career? What are ways that you practice mental health? You know, being good to yourself. So I started doing this course called To Be Magnetic that I always rep uh, recommend. And it's, uh, for me, it's like the best form of therapy and it grounds me a lot. And uh, it's a series of podcasts that I usually listen to while I'm walking down the street, while I'm walking Jeff down the street. And then um, I haven't gone to therapy in a while, but when I lost my mother, for example, I was very angry, very mm -hmm. angry. And I needed to learn how to set boundaries. And I feel like that was a very painful and tough process. But I feel like that process taught me how certain things are not worth stressing over. And so I've become better because I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? What's well, definitely not going to be as bad as losing my mother. So after right. that, I feel like I'm a little bit more bulletproof. Um, but boundaries were an amazing word that I learned in America and I'm never going to forget. <laughs> yeah. And then um, surround yourself from people that support you, support uh who you are in the good and in the bad and 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 just detox from negative people negative energy and do things that make you happy garden walk go to the cinema and not be afraid to be alone and do those things alone i think yeah yeah no i think those are all incredible tools and we all have different tools in our toolbox right what are your think... what are your tools i feel like um... you have some good ones yeah, you know, I, uh, I'm a huge, I, I need to work out every day. It's the, it's where I clear my mind. It's where I can, you know, just not think about work for an hour. Um, I love walking. I love writing. So I have a journal and I take a minute, you know, not every day, but a few times a week. It's called the one minute journal. And I just write things that I'm grateful Whenever for. Whenever it comes out. Yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts like you. I think they're super important. I surround myself with you know, positive people who are not toxic. Great. I think we have to remember to not keep that I feel like that's people. the biggest thing for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, just having a time for, for me, like learning how to say no, kind of like your boundaries, learning exactly. like, you know what, I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to go here because I just need some me time. A hundred percent. And I feel like also spending less time on social media could be good. Yes, I agree with good. you. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I think that it's it's a really hard, um, you know, it's hard because we love social media, but mm -hmm. too much isn't always great. Yeah, of everything. I, I'm terrible at social media. I feel like I'm very good in person. That's why to all the fans, if you ever see me in the street, come and say hi. But on social media, I suck. I just need the in-person interaction. 
<laughs> it's okay. We all we all feel you on that. Trust me. <laughs> um, now I have to sp I have to share a message, and I I hope Danielle is watching too. This is for the both of you. Um, a lot of fans wrote to me saying that there was a certain fan, Luciana, I believe is was her name, and she was about twenty four, and she sadly passed away from COVID. And a lot of the fans looked mm -hmm. at her as like the leader and she would bring a lot of the fans together and celebrate you and Danielle and was such a champion for the both of you um, and just so loved what you two stood for and um, I think that from what I read from a few of her of, of her friends the services are either today or tomorrow so the timing of this interview is quite quite remarkable so I was wondering, and they were wondering if you could share any words of support for her family and for her girlfriend, and even for her who's watching, you know, hopefully from up above um, right now. Oh my God, this is so tough. And I feel like there's so little that anybody can say to um, heal that kind of a pain, especially for her family, for her girlfriend, for her loved ones. It's just, ah, oh, yeah. I do believe that even when they're gone, people live on. I've, I always say the story about booking this job, Grey's Anatomy job, going to the audition on, on my mom's birthday and starting working on my mom's name day, Onomastico. And in a way for me, that felt like she was watching me throughout all this. So I feel like feeling like even though they're not physically here, they're still here with us in some other way, I think is very, helpful beneficial and 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 i hope all the all all the family and the friends can find ways to still connect with her in spirit even if her body is not here right now yeah well thank you thank you that's i know that's going to be very helpful to many people and they're going to appreciate hearing from you so that was very kind of you to, to offer those words and um before i let you go I love asking this question to certain people I have on the show who I know would really appreciate it. And you strike me as somebody who would appreciate this question. And that question is, what is a piece of advice that you wish your younger self had known that can help, you know, some of the younger fans tuned in today? Stay true to your authentic self, which seems so basic but it's so true i feel like i lost myself yeah. several times coming to a foreign country and and traveling mm -hmm. so much and tries trying to please everybody and i feel like the most amazing work i've done the most amazing relationship i've ever crafted were the ones where i could truly be myself and mm -hmm. i feel like that's that's the reason why we're here to do whatever our true self is inspired to do and and yeah, let's not let stupid voices from negative people affect who we really are. Keep improving, keep 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 getting becoming better, but not at the expenses of who we really are. Oh my God, beautiful advice that we should all remember time and time again. I, I love that so much. And to all of the fans who are tuned in, who are st standing by your side, cheering you on, what do you want to say to everybody before we go? You're freaking amazing. Never in a million years I would have expected to have so many people loving what I do and, and how I do it. And, and I was always saying, I suck at social media, but please, if you meet me down the street, come and say hi. I'll, I would love to give you a hug. Oh, I love that so much. Savanya, this was so much fun getting to talk <laughs> to you. I could talk to you for hours. Thank you so much for hanging so out. For, for oh my God, are you show. kidding me? Thank you so much for bringing me on. And again, so many sad moments, but hopefully we managed to, to, to give a little smile as well today. I think we did. And for everybody watching, I'm going to post this interview right now to my feed so you can rewatch it and share it. And if you haven't seen it, you can go find it. Um, and I'll tag you as well, Stefania. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope to interview you in person, maybe an onset tour one day. We'll figure it Amazing. out. Amazing, exactly. All right. All my love, kisses. Bye. Kisses to you. Bye. Bye bye. Ciao.